right, so due to some scheduling weirdness on my end, I'm going to go into my D&D game schedule and various other stuff related to work. We're going to push Nintendo Power Retrospectives back a bit, and this week we're doing another vlog-style review. Um, book review, uh, taking a look at Project Hail Mary. This is the latest book by Andy Weir, the author of The Martian, and it is a Hugo Award nominee. Now, this video will be going up before the Hugo Awards are announced, but after the cutoff for voting. So I can't do a voting recommendation or anything like that for that, but I will, I will give my thoughts on it nonetheless. So full disclosure, I have not read The Martian. Yes, yes, I know. Boo, boo. I also haven't read Andy Weir's second book, Artemis, either. Both books are on my to-read list. Uh, though, and when the 2022 Hugo Award nominees came around, I saw that Project Hail Mary, Weir's latest book, was on the list. And I decided it was time for me to get around to reading some Weir. So, Project Hail Mary tells the story of Earth facing an extraterrestrial threat that threatens to render all under Earth, un Earth uninhabitable to all life. But thanks to a spaceship built using technology closely re related to that threat, humanity sends this ship on a desperate gamble to go to a distant star system and retrieve a method that would reverse this threat and save the world. And the main difference between that, my description of that premise there, um, or use that description of the premise between uh, Project Hail Mary and Space Battleship Yamato is that in Space Battleship Yamato, there is a alien empire that is the source of this and our main characters have to fight their way through it and all this, that, and the other thing. It's a big space military adventure. And Project Hail Mary, the threat in question, is a interstellar microorganism that feeds on stars and causes them to dim. Um, and because of the energy that they're drawing from the stars, the microorganism can be harnessed and bred and used for energy. So yeah, that's the big difference there. Um, also, Space Project Yamato had a big crew, and Project Hail Mary, um, the ship in question, due to a mishap in transit, all of the crew except for one man die. And so it is up to our protagonist, our Salter protagonist, to science the hell out of this problem, making it basically like the Martian. And, but what makes like the, it's big standalone thing is our protagonist arrives at the star system in question, Tau Ceti, and discovers that there is another ship there also investigating this, from another system that has been infected by this heliophage bacteria, or astrophage bacteria. Um, and so this, this is, we more specifically a first contact story where these two people from different worlds but having to deal with a common threat the this astrophage that is dimming their stars and risking destroying wiping out their worlds um you know this common element that draws them together and to find out what to find out how to solve this problem and save both their planets. And it's up over the course of this because um, our main character, Dr. Ryland Grace, wakes up initially with a degree of post sort of um, stas coma induced stasis or stasis induced coma, what have you, amnesia. Um, we get some flashbacks back to Earth as he's recovering his memories and to kind of had out the book to explain this whole scenario. And to be blunt, um, Weir feels like he's trying to moisten a potentially very dry first contact story by marinating it in wit with use of the, um, again, that, that amnesia and memory recovery subplot to add background through flashback. It's not boring. Um, and the dialogue is wit and charm to it, but didn't grab me of the, the first contact stories that I've encountered because the context is is we have this larger threat of this of the uh, astrophage and also because the other alien is operating more or less solitarily 
um, and our protagonist is also solitary, there, there is a loss, loss of character breadth that you get when you have a bunch of humans reacting to first contact with a singular alien, or a bunch of aliens having their first contact with a singular human, and that sort of thing. Either a bunch of aliens from different cultures on one world, or a bunch of di aliens from different races, or that sort of thing. And we don't have that here. You know, the story works well enough. I enjoyed it. I read it all the way through. I didn't reach a point where like, no, I'm, I hate this. I'm not going to finish reading it. It was fine. But it never made me go, yeah, like I'm... It wasn't, this doesn't make me feel a full-throated recommendation. It definitely feels more like my, my, my the caveat recommendation of, Oh, you enjoyed The Martian and Andy Weir's other stuff? Here's more Andy Weir. But if that's the case, if you enjoyed Andy Weir's other stuff, you're already aware of this book already and have picked it up. It's like it getting a Hugo Award nomination doesn't. Like it, it gave me that extra edge to pick it up just because I'm reading the Hugo Award things on for the content, if you will. Um, but otherwise, it's fine. It's it's much more airport novely than I'd expect for a Hugo Award nominee. And especially considering stuff like, you know, we got we got a master we got mas a master of the Jin, a master of Jin on the list. We have Light from Uncommon Stars on the list, which have much stronger narratives, um, much stronger character dynamics and character interplay, and um, senses of tension to the story. Uh, while Part of Hail Mary has been licensed, has been optioned for a movie based on the success of The Martian, I'd rather see a Master of Jin. I'd rather see a Light from Uncommon Stars. Um, and honestly, of those two, I, I, either one of those are a much stronger recommendation for me. Um, I, or I would give a much stronger recommendation to than Project Hail Mary. Project Hail, like, Project Hail Mary is, is fine. Master of Dijin, Master of Jin and Light from Uncommon Stars were, this is good, you should read these. I am, like, I... If I were a registered Hugo voter, I would be torn between those two books with the asterisk of the other nominees on the Best Novel Ballot are ones in series that I haven't read the previous installments of, with the exception of She Who Became the Sun that I'm currently making my way through right now. Project Hail Mary is like, okay, this is all right, but it doesn't, it doesn't grab me in that same way. I see why it got nominated because it's a very classic science fiction story in a way that certain chunks of the kind of people who go to world cons and buy voting memberships would um, get them or nominating memberships would, would hook them in. But I had no point to like rock back in my chair necessarily. Like, oh, this was, this is the, this is the good stuff, man. Never got that reaction from it, from it necessarily. It's a good, it's a fun ride, but it's not one like oh, I'm, I'm going to take that again. So that's my thoughts there. As far as if, if the movie about it, if the movie first of it gets made, would I go see it? Honestly, it depends on like, like Ryan Gosling is cast as the main, as currently attached to play. Uh, the lead, but like depending on the cast and the, 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 the director and the script was what would hook me in more necessarily. So that's where I'm at on that. If you have different thoughts on on uh, Project Hail Mary, please post in the comments. Um, and I will have my thoughts on She Who Became the Sun once I have finished that book. <laughs>
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 